dirt brought back. Quincy. Kind of stuff you love, isn't it? Quincy. Yeah. Kind of stuff you love. And he's got me involved with it. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Okay. Get together. There we go. This is the Jacksonville Water and Sewer Advisory Committee. I'm glad to see everybody here tonight. So let's do an adoption of the agenda. Do we, uh, second it. We have a motion. And a second. Do we have any discussion? Anybody wants to make any response to it? Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Okay. All opposed? Motion carried. Approval of the minutes. Do we have any discussion on that? Anybody find anything that needed to be changed, corrected, or nobody has no comments? All right, I'll take a motion for approval. So move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand. Thank you. Uh, water and sewer report, Wally Hanson. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Board. Um, with the agenda that we mailed out, we also included a um, two-page water and sewer advisory committee report. Um, we thought we would try this with you to see if it's something that you like. Our manager does something similar with the city council where he sends out a, a written management report. <clears throat> and we thought maybe we could include information that you get on a uh, <clears throat> that you ask for on a periodic basis and and really have it to where instead of you know for example the grace report presenting the grace report at every monthly meeting we actually provide it to you in a report format to where we can give you some history with it also um, some other things that we've included is, is something that Councilman Thomas has asked for um, for several months, which is the um, information on utility customers. And you can see there the, the number of bills that we've processed, the terminations, the new services, and then um, what we call zero usage accounts. They are um, accounts that customers are paying the bills on, but they're not using any water. Um, so the house, you know, it's a rental that's sitting vacant this month or something along those lines. So that we could trend those numbers and you actually have access to them. Um, other things that we thought we would include is <clears throat> from uh, the utility maintenance shop or, or Pete's area, um, a report on the water and sewer system, um, things that have happened over the month. You know, some months may be slow where we, we haven't had as many um leaks or or you know service leaks happen all the time but they're not major we can repair those fairly quickly and we we really kind of just track them for type of material and numbers and where they're at um so this that's information that we can provide to you in a fairly easily summarized report so they should have an overall of where we stand and the one thing that as i read through this again today you know one of the things that i'll point out is we had two what we'll call sewer main breaks. Um, both of those were from directional drilling. Um, one was a fiber optic company hit the force main near Carolina Forest. And um, actually it's from Carolina Forest, but near um, the, across from Cheddar's. And then the, we also had one in Carolina Forest. Um, it was somebody, the gas, a uh, company providing a service to a house actually went directly through our <clears throat> our sewer main and really it was causing blockages we didn't have a spill or anything it was just causing blockages and uh, our utilities crews went out camera the line found it and worked with the gas company to get it removed both of those were charged back to um, the the people that caused the problem but those are things that we can include each month as it as it happens um, and then you can see there um, for significant events, hopefully we don't have these every month, but um, if you were in Jacksonville over Christmas Eve, you know that we had a significant rainfall in a very short period of time. Um, and unfortunately it came at high tide, you know, the, the river could
couldn't take any <clears throat> excuse me couldn't take any more water and therefore the rest of our system backed up um, I, I went out and looked at some of our creeks and streams and most of them were outside of their banks um, you know it was it was just a significant rain event but with that we had um, I believe it was nine stations that went into high alarm which means they were seeing um, you know higher flows because of the weather which again attributes back to inflow and infiltration um, with that the and it, admittedly we do have some of our alarm floats set um, lower than what they could be but that gives us more response time which is why they are lower um, but some of those alarms lasted for several days and when we say alarms it doesn't mean that the wet well was necessarily high it could be that uh, we lost power at something and a generator kicked on so we get an alarm for that. It could be that we had an alarm for um, multiple pumps kicking on. If the flow um, exceeds what one pump can handle on its own, we have multiple pumps in each station so it may be the, a second pump kicked on to help. But when that, we want to know when that happens so we might receive an alarm for that. Um, so just because there's nine alarms doesn't mean that they are all high wet well alarms. Um, but we can include this type of information and then as um, you know one of the other things that we thought about after this report went out Mr. Doran gives you an update from the planning board what the planning board did each month uh, that's something that we could very very easily include into this report so you'll have it um, so really this is kind of a test to see what you think how you like it um, and that way you have it before the meeting if you have questions you can either you know email us if you don't want to bring it up at the meeting or if it's something you want to bring up at the meeting you'll have something that you can look at and discuss I have a question yes. uh, I like it yeah, yeah. I think it's great I think this, yeah, this is very very good okay. I think no, we get something like this every month I feel like it would be and that, that would be our plan is to, to send it to you each month with your agenda. And that way, if you have questions or concerns, you can certainly bring them up at the meeting or, or send myself or Novella an email and we'll, we'll find the answer for you. And this is probably a better question for Sabrina and Billy. But when you look at this um, utility customer information, termination and new services, I guess I have to wonder how many of these is a term if somebody doesn't pay their bill and it gets turned off is that count as a termination i don't think so because yes. i believe there's shutoffs also on the list and we didn't choose to <coughs> terminations okay. are just okay. so termination would be service of yes. actual i'm done moving and yes you know, sir and new, and new service would be the same thing well that's good to know. yes sir and again i think if maybe we could include that meter Me number of number meters, of meters okay what i was trying to get to is how many vacancies you know what's our occupancy ratio <clears throat> so if you got the total meters which is right at 19,000 that's correct it's a so couple got, thousand more you got 19,000 meters and there's 17,500 accounts so that's about 1500 that are on and then you've got another thousand that are using none so that's about 2,500 vacancies in my mind. Well, the meters, the, I, I understand. the yeah. challenge with that one is the meters, yeah. right? You may have multiple meters going to a single bill. So just because a meter's red, but it's there not a bill a processed. Additional vacancies. It, it, that's right. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a true linear equation, unfortunately. Right. At least it's something we can look at. It's and we will be happy to include those. We have that information. Treatment, yeah. If I can ask, I'm not sure I see the point uh, of what you're trying to gather in that aggregation in that if you have somebody, I'm a good example, I have rental properties, people tell me I should turn my water off, I don't because I go in the house and do things, but they'll register zero in some months because I'll have absolutely no, but I'm still paying the minimum fees. So I'm not sure why you'd want to think that thousand should be added to 1500 and because they're empty if there's no if there's no usage there's nobody living there but you're still charging me i, I think care. the I'm concern is i think the concern is though if you get your bill too high mm -hmm. then those are people that you potentially start losing as cu as customers faster 
are, are you trying to get an idea of the backlog of, of vacant properties? Yeah. Just yeah, just to see how the town is trending. You know how. Would, would that come from the real estate company instead? Multiple listing service. Well, I mean, this is actual yeah. numbers. We don't have that's. We got one source here. I think this would be simpler. Well, well, this is our commerce. Put some yeah. of that. This is this is your, your, where your money comes month. from. So that's, that's why I wanted yeah. to pay attention to that. So you're really not looking for this as a gauge of anything for the water and sewer function. You're looking at it just as a trend of how oh, fully totally utilized the land is. Everything, yeah. Because um, if you, I'm not sure there's any useful measurement even of saying you have 1900 or 19,000 meters and you only got 1700 turned on so you got 1500 2000 that aren't turned on um, I'm not sure what you do with that information as it relates to the water and sewer function you know but, now if you're saying you, you it just helps you judge your demand how, how far are you to capacity you know what I'm saying if you saw that number getting higher and higher, then that would increase demand. You'd say you'd increase housing demand. It's just, just some information. Again, again it's just, and I'm to just get trying a trend. To, I'm trying to relate how you're using it because I might want to think of it in the same terms. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm not catching the drift as far as what we do here on the board because if a new development comes on, they'll build and they'll make put meters on. And when they sell the houses, those meters will get turned on. So, and that's figured it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's already figured into the capacity of both the water and the sewer. Because when the plans came in and said, I want to build a uh, Freedom Park behind the food line, wherever, the, uh, before they got their permit, it was determined that we could uh, take the, the demand for water and sewer. That's correct. But we, have, we And we use a model right. to determine capacity in the system. We have a, a wastewater model that we use. To ensure so, that before we say yes, that development can go there, to ensure that not only do we have capacity at the plant, but we can actually convey it to the plant without causing problems along the way. I'm just trying to relate to how you're trying to relate to it because I look at it and they say if every meter that was installed was uh, installed and in uh, hooked up to the system was being charged. That wouldn't mean we didn't have capacity, nor would it mean there was something wrong with the way we were managing water and sewer, in my mind. Because the next meter would be with the next development that the planning department said could be built. But as, as also was mentioned, that if one meter is serving multiple places, you don't know, let's say it's serving right. five, you don't know is one vacant right. or three of sure, them vacant. vacant yeah. sure. And it, it'd be hard to capture that just from this. And that's why I was wondering if maybe the, the chamber information, if they'd be able to help together capture any of that. I don't know. I do think the information is useful. Though. I'm glad to see it on there. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Or Wally, you got some more? Mm -hmm. The only thing I'll add is, and I started down this road and didn't finish my turn of thought, but I know the water and sewer system report, what we reported, Two sewer main breaks. One of those was actually a reportable spill. It was the one where they drilled into the side of um, the force main coming from Carolina Force. And Pete worked directly with the state. And because we could show that it was of no fault to the city and the fact that we went after the person, that, the, the company that was responsible, um, the city didn't see any fines or notice of violations or anything. I have a question, um, and I know you all have seen these signs, like w when you're going to drill or something, they say call that, is it 811 yes. number? Does, <coughs> is the city's water main information on that too? Yes, we actually, what happens is you call that, uh -huh. and that service, we are a member of that service, mm -hmm. and they uh -huh. actually send a ticket to <coughs> us, and we go out, and um, Pete has somebody dedicated to ut utility locates. And they locate our water and sewer mains. Where they put those little flags. Then how did this company drill then? It was marked. They just, you know, Post depth and. <laughs> it doesn't it look like there should be anything this. here to let's drill. I've had them cut through ours too. I think yeah, Village Street. Even when it's marked. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Okay. AT&T got us real good ones. Now, did they pay for the repairs these yes. companies they'll be responsible for all costs we actually sent them a bill is there any other repercussions that they receive from that other than a fine 
I mean, the bill? They received, uh, no, I don't think we fined yeah. them for anything. Yeah. No, it was strictly for cost of cleanup right. materials and uh, labor. But all of our costs for doing it is recouped? Yes. Okay. So the only time that wouldn't be is if it didn't get, it, it, it slipped through the cracks and it didn't get labeled. Correct. If it was marked incorrectly or not marked at all. So if they call, that would be our responsibility. Out. But isn't it their yes. responsibility to call 811 and get yes. it marked? No, no, that, yes. that's, if they go out, if they call, somebody goes out and they miss marking a line, uh, yeah. and then yes. that line gets hit, then the fact that they called and somebody went out, they're, they're covered. How do you find them underground? Just out of curiosity. How do, how do we find them? Yeah, how do you find it tomorrow? How do we locate them? We so have, we, there's several options. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, rod, uh, a, rod, a rod that we push down and actually feel it. Uh -huh. um, they do the old the witching stick. Um, then when some of them have the uh, <coughs> copper tracing wire that uh -huh. when the pipe was installed, they installed the wire and That's we have a, what I call a cable hound. Mm -hmm. and we can tone it out and find it that way. Okay. We use as built for those that we can't find those, and then use um, markers to try to line them. Now, are they more accurate than they used to be, using the the cable, the, the electronic the cable that you took? Because Depends I know used to it could be a foot either way of where they mark. Is it, that better now, or to be honest with you, it depends on the person using it <laughs> and how much they want to, how accurate they want to be. The state law gives us 30 inches on each side of the mark. Um, you know, so technically we've got a five-foot span that they're supposed to hand dig, uh, whether they choose to or not. It's a different story, but um, they, are, they are pretty accurate. Is the Enterprise Fund reimbursed in a timely manner? We found in the case of the, the grease that people don't do things very quickly, especially if there's no pressure to. When you send the bill to them for these events, and I assume we'll have more than these two this year. Are they reimbursing the enterprise fund in a timely manner or we don't know? I can tell you that we turn it over to um, um, water billing and they handle it. But I can tell you they stay on until it's paid. <laughs> they don't stop. <laughs> okay. no, I, so I don't know how timely, but typically what happens is the when we receive when somebody reimburses us it would go into a revenue account and then if we need to transfer it back to for example this cost came out of you know, the upfront cost came out of um, utility maintenance's budget so then to move it back to the budget we would have to go to council for a legislative budget amendment to move it back many times for you know if it's five thousand dollars or so we may not go or we may wait right to the end of the year to move it if because if we don't need it, then there's no reason moving it over because we'll go to fund balance anyway. Fund general fund balance. No, the enterprise well, fund balance. Fine. Correct. Thank you. Well, I have a comment on this, sir. Part of a, part of water and sewers problem is it's out of sight, out of mind because it's all underground. Some of this information might be useful on your little cheat sheet you put in with your water bill. Okay. To inform the the people of what's going on and what you actually do. Just a suggestion. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> any, other, <clears throat> any other questions of Waller? Okay. Miss Young, you're up next. <laughs> Good evening. Um, so last month we were, um, I came before the board and we talked about the projects that we had previously approved in prior CIPs and we talked about some of those projects and at that time we stated that during this month's meeting we would just talk about some of the new projects that staffs identified as a need um, and so that's what we're going to talk about this evening um, you have I think there was only about seven new projects that we're going to be discussing this evening and the first one we're going to talk about is the HVAC upgrade in two electrical buildings so as a reminder, staff looks at possible projects or issues that we need to address, and this was one of them. And as we've talked about before, the CIP is an evolving process. So in this particular case, staff identified a need. Um, this need came to us uh, this year. This wasn't something that was previously in the, in the CIP. 
and the need is to, um, to, to add HVAC to these buildings to extend the life of the electrical equipment to help reduce the amount of repair and maintenance costs. So after further discussion with staff and really trying to dive into some of the details, we have decided that this is more of a maintenance issue rather than a true capital improvement cost. So um, as a result, we're going to remove it from the proposed CIP, because again, we're still in the draft process, so this is going to be removed. Um, staff is gonna look at some alternative options of adding HVAC or air conditioning in these buildings, um, and therefore it will not be part of the final CIP. So this kind of just further shows that we are working towards finalizing our CIP, um, but this one will not be one that you will see. So. The next project is the solids dewatering bed at the LTS. Um, this is, in essence, is we're constructing a, a flat bed, a flat surface uh, at, uh, to dry the sludge, grease, and debris that it's removed out of the pump station. And um, this project is about 600 square foot. We are currently, as you've shown on your, pa your paper, we were looking at constructing it in FY19. And after further discussion with staff, the need is more prevalent than 19. So we're actually looking at moving this up until next year's CIP. So with a possible design and construction in 16 rather than what it's shown here as 19, and we're estimating a cost of about 76,000. And the need is more prevalent now because of um, a recent development that I think you would like to expand upon. Sure. Uh, you may be aware that Pete was working with, in conjunction with Omwasa, and Omasa had some drying beds out in the Hunters Creek area, and they were actually allowing the city to take our grease and solids over there, put them in the drying beds, and then, you know, letting the, the water drain off of it and letting it dry out, and then we would um, haul it off to the landfill. And by doing that, we got a lot of the water weight out of what we were disposing, so the disposal cost was a lot less. Unfortunately, the state stepped in and basically told um, Omwasa that they could no longer use those beds, I believe. Um, so unfortunately, and Omwasa had another option, but it's a much smaller option and it's outside of town. Um, but unfortunately for us, we have one small um, dewatering bed at the public services complex, um, but it's not large enough or sufficient enough to handle what we do with our lift stations. So currently we're hauling stuff off wet, or a lot of it is being hauled off wet. So it costs us more to dispose of. Um, also in looking at this, uh, we'll be looking at uh, other things that we can add to the scope. And just as an example, the city <coughs> is now in uh, dumpster collection service. Uh, commercial dumpster collection and as part of that service um, the city actually has a requirement where restaurants that have um, that produce grease related trash have to have their dumpsters cleaned once every six months so now that the city will get into providing dumpsters mm -hmm. we're going to have to be able to haul them off clean them and basically provide new or dumpsters to those restaurant facilities so you're gonna have to get rid of that grease too so we're going to have to do something with that grease also mm -hmm. so we're also looking at whether this can you know we can add to this scope um, and in the past um, dr. Rashash actually sent me an email today and asked if we had considered you know others like private um, grease um, or septage haulers because there's not many places that they can dispose of grease, um, none in Onslow County, as she pointed out. And you know that may be an opportunity that with this project we could take advantage of. Um, while we hadn't thought of that specific use, we've actually been contacted before by haulers like Toy Toy, um, where they have, you know, they have their own land application, but they have problems with that. So they have contacted us before about possibly contracting with us and disposing with us but we've other than our one bed at public services we really haven't been able to accommodate them very well so there are other alternatives there or options there that we can look at as we're moving forward with the scope of this project 
So right now we don't have we don't have any planning or any design done. <clears throat> this is just you know this is the idea that will lead to that planning and that design. Um, but we need to do that sooner rather than later. I'm trying to recall that this qualifies for capital improvement because of its uh, useful life. Uh, it's under the dollar value. The dollar value, I think, is fifty thousand. So, so it's yeah. over the dollar value and the okay. um, the useful life. Yes, sir. Okay. I have a question. Where <coughs> and after are you thinking about putting it? Oh, uh, <laughs> we're not sure yet. Well, that's what I'm but wondering because you don't want to cut into where the trees are doing their job. No, no, no. We would be looking up pond. around. We would be looking up around the pond somewhere. Okay. Now you look at it as like being a money making deal down the road. When you start no, but if we have the option of recovering costs, that would certainly be yeah. beneficial. When you have the commercial accounts have to have their dumpsters clean, is that included as part of their service and they're already be billed for that? Or yes. would that be a service that you charge for separately? No, that would be part of their service that they're already billed for. Okay. That would be part of the dumpster rental. Okay. Well, where's the, the final destination of all this dewatered soil? Right now we take it to the landfill. Could you... Uh, build this facility at the landfill so you wouldn't have to haul this stuff twice? You'd have to get... I'm not sure. Company. I'm not sure how much... The landfill is owned by the county. I'm not sure how much um, land they have that could be used, but it would still have to make its way back to our system. The, the leachate from it, the water from it, would have to make its way back to our system. You'd be hauling more water than if you're doing it vice versa. Evaporation. <laughs> Pardon? Evaporation. <laughs> Not in eastern North Carolina. Not with that. <laughs> 600 square feet, how much area does that cover? Um, That's, so is that the volume you are talking about? Six no, that would be just a, that is so a 60 by 100. But okay. that was before, That's you know, that's just, just yeah, for if we go with peaks, you know, to cover utilities, maintenance, what they're doing. If we start adding to that scope, certainly that would have to be larger. Okay. But it would also have additional funding sources. Okay. All right. The next project is new Bridge Street <coughs> infrastructure. There is a coordinating <coughs> streetscape project scheduled in FY20, and that streetscape project, which is funded not by water and sewer funds, would consist of improvements to landscaping and sidewalks um, and looking at the on-street parking. And this and it, it covers the same span of on New Bridge from Johnson Boulevard to Warlick Street. So before we do the streetscape project, we need to evaluate the infrastructure. This we have staff has done no preliminary work at this time. The estimate that you see is just a with the assumption of a full replacement of the water and sewer lines in this in this area. What makes this interesting is that we've got several water lines and several sewer lines on both sides of the street. So um, we're hoping that as we go through the evaluation process, we can utilize the the cured in place lining or do point repairs rather than do a full replacement. But as in all of our projects, when we do anything above ground, we need to look at what's underground also so we're not having to go back and tear something up. So as of right now, this project is scheduled for design, preliminary, des preliminary planning and design in, in 18, construction in 19, and it has an estimated cost of um, just over a million dollars. Question but on sidewalk, since you mentioned that. I just had somebody ask me recently, knowing I was on the board, how do you determine where sidewalks go in Jacksonville? Well, the city council appropriates Powerville money <clears throat> every year. Um, and in the past, it's been about $180,000, and it kind of goes into a fund. And we coordinate with our the MPO and transportation. What does it stand for? Metropolitan, Metropolitan Planning Organization. And so he coordinates with, um, and we look at opportunities either for infill development, where we've got maybe two pieces of sidewalk, but it's missing that small connection piece. If we can go in there and, and take care of that, then we will. It might be some needs that are expressed by citizens or by city council or staff, um, or it, it just areas. We try to get the larger areas. One of the ones that we've recently done is on Gum Branch in Henderson, 
we, I don't know if you've, we had the Kmart area in Jacksonville High School in that area, we've, we've, that was a big right. project we did this past year. And we're looking at doing another big one on Western Boulevard, the older section, and that'll be night work because of, of the, the street that we're doing. But we try to look at some of those areas um, where there's need. So if you, if you know of anything, any concerns, then you know, please pass those on and we'll definitely share those with others. So that's the, if somebody has a concern, Particular person I was talking to said it was a safety issue for kids walking yes. to school. Yeah, and we have we've, we've they would contact mm -hmm. you guys directly, sure. or how would they yes, go they, about doing they, it? You, they can contact us, okay. not a problem. I'll I mean, in on. the past, we've had citizens um, contact the manager or staff, and we do an evaluation. Um, sometimes, if there is a true safety concern, then we'll get um, our traffic safety advisory board has members of um, the police department. And so we do we do a full analysis when we look at um, a particular sidewalk. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry that You're I digressed welcome. a little bit. So thank you. Um, in regard to the uh, last project, do we know what the pipes that both water and sewer are? They 1940 pipes? Is that what we're expecting to find? I don't know. Do you know the age? I they're think they're old. some of the original infrastructure. Yeah. So 40s, 50s, or earlier if you're saying the original. So yeah, we're close to the original. Yeah, it's yeah. 40s, 50s. Thank you. The next project is an emergency interconnection with the Marine Corps base. Just so of some prior history, you might have remember in some past CIPs that the city had partnered with Onwasa to do two other emergency interconnections to combine our systems. And so now we're taking that one step further and we're going to look at combining our system with the base's system. This was um, something that had been in a prior CIP, I think going back to fiscal year 11. Most recently, I believe there was an outage um, on base, and so this has become a need for the Marine Corps base to, to make this interconnection. Um, we're looking at the Marine Corps des making design of this project and construction, <coughs> design now and construction in next year. The Marine Corps will be funding part of this project, so the, the total estimated cost is about 127000 but the cost for the city is just over 55000 This location is um, um, the entrance of TT, or Terroir Terrace 1. Did you say? Yes, that's right. The base actually lost the pipe. Terroir Terrace is fed from across the river, and they actually mm -hmm. lost a pipe this summer and I think they lost water service for more than a day in Taro Terrace where if we had this interconnection in place we would have actually been able to provide them with emergency water. Blue Creek School Road Water Improvements Phase 1. So we're going to go right to a map I think will help kind of, I know it's kind of small so we'll have to acclimate you wherever we're at. So over in this area is, I don't know if you can see, but over in this area over here is where the DOT office is, and this is, this is the turn off the loop from the bypass. Does everyone know where I'm talking about, 24? Okay, bear with me as I figure this out. Okay, now that we know where we're at. So what we're looking at doing is um, the area down in this area, roughly, has been identified as a possible um, area for industrial development. And realizing that we've got a sewer pump station, the Southwest pump stations here, we're looking at the possibility of extending water to this area so that there would be some economic drivers there if someone wanted to redevelop this area in that manner. So the closest water line that we have is up in this area here. Right in front of DOT. Yeah, right in front of DOT. So what we're looking at doing is the possibility of extending a water line from DOT Round 24 all the way down to Blue Creek School Road right in this area and then <coughs> popping up this way. And this is a very preliminary um, look at this project mm -hmm. along with this budget. This is something that will have to be ex ex um, a lot further analysis needs to be done to see if this is even possible, what we're talking about. One of the concerns identified is that there might not be enough water pressure to do it, and as, as you see described, we might have to put in a, a booster station. 
Um, another benefit would be that uh. once this was constructed, we could further connect the water line back up this way to 53 <coughs> and create a loop system where now we've got water channeling um, in that area. But again, this is a, a um, the only thing that's identified in 16 is just planning and some preliminary design with the possibility of starting to construction if this idea is feasible. Is this area all in the city limits? It's yeah. ETJ. It it's not. in the ETJ. Where's the city limit? It comes right up along there the bypass. The office. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Now the road is within city limits. Highway, uh, Highway 17 South is within city, city limits. limits. Have you got people expressing interest to build there at all? We or have had a, some interest. Okay, so that's what's driving this? Yes, sir. People are already saying they want to build yes, industrial? Sir. Yes, sir. We've, we've heard talk about light industri industrial or flex space or something along those. Um, one of the, and, and one of the things that we'll be looking at as this project moves forward, if it moves forward, um, would be funding sources one of the funding sources that we have available is a special area fund where if we make this these improvements we actually divide the cost of that project out over the service area that that is provided by that main and basically it would be a facilities fee for the cost of this project so we do have okay. some options for funding sources of course we have to upfront the money but we would recover it as as things developed and for example as the track across blue creek school road <coughs> developed we would again recover cost it's in the etj but there's no problem with Amwasa and the services that they provide in that area well Amwasa does not have the only sewer service in that area is um, the springdale acres which is actually turned and comes to the city of jacksonville so the city has the pump station and when that pump station was constructed the city partnered with Onwasa. Onwasa uh, basically built their share of the pump station the portion that it, the capacity that they would need for Springdale Acres to take that private plant offline and then they had um, the city contributed and we identified vacant property that could be future development and would have to request annexation to receive services and this is one of those areas they didn't request annexation their option would not be a wasa or a they would not have access to sewer thank you you're welcome how big is the track i don't recall it's a large track though Next project is um, to rehabilitate Black Creek Wells. This actually consists of two wells. We've got Well 1 um, that is currently out of service with the construction of some of the newer wells. The pumps at this older well couldn't overcome the pressure, and so therefore new electrical equipment, pumps, and motors are needed. In Well 5, the other well is currently out of service, and it needs staff believes that we can rehabilitate it um, without having to drill a new well and that the screens would be lowered from the Black Creek to the PDD aquifer. PD, PD sorry, thank you. Um, so this project obviously um, is a need. So it's design and construction in 16 and estimated cost is about 88,000. So there's no concerns about salinity issues down the PD? Or would they not matter if mixed with at the membrane facility? Well, if we, these wells would not go to the membrane. They, they would not go to the water treatment plant. And actually, the, the description is just one option. Um, we've had Dr. Sproul with um, East Carolina University, who is probably one of the most renowned people in this area for um, underground aquifers. And he's, he's, done a cursory review and he's not sure whether that's our best option or not he's it's the cheapest option um, but we also lose capacity um, going from the black creek to the pd we, do, we would actually lose 
about three or four hundred gallons a minute if we did that. Okay. Um, the problem is the well, I, I don't remember when the well was constructed, but it's an old well that was, I wish Joe was here, but I think it's from the 50s or 60s. And um, the basically the, the only option is to either make it a PD well because we've lost the lower part of that casing or to redrill it. And Dr. Sproul thinks that redrilling it actually may be a better option. So you'd be coming but we're not sure yet. You'd be coming up rather than going down. Yes, that's correct. Right now, currently it's a it's a Black Creek well, so we would just be cutting off the lower portion. Didn't the Wiz kids in Raleigh decide that there wasn't that much that the Black River was recharging faster than they thought it was? Are going to cut us any slack there, on that? There was some agreement that the Black Creek is actually recharging faster than what was originally anticipated. Um, what they've done is with the last revision in, I believe it came out in November, um, they, the, the state actually said that if you can meet four criteria, we will not make you take the next reduction, which would, we would lose another 25% in 2018, but you have to meet those four criteria. And I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head what all four, four criteria are. I know that we can meet two of them automatically. Um, one of, I do remember one of the criteria are um, you have to show that the salinity is not trending in an upward direction or in a negative direction. So you're not making that portion of the aquifer more salty. Um, so and to and you have to have a, and I don't remember if it was two years of data or or what, but you had that from a monitoring well. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have any monitoring wells of the Black Creek in this area. So that's one of the things that we're actually looking at is putting in a mon monitoring well somewhere so that we can ensure that we meet that criteria prior to 2018. Um, so, but they have not said that. They have not backed off of it completely. However, what the state has said is, for example, both of these wells are, are Black Creek wells. So if, if well one or well five, and we use well five as the example, um, if well five truly we decide that it's better off to redrill that well, then the state will permit us um, basically abandoning well five and drilling a new well five. So we're not increasing our capacity, we're just replacing it. Mm -hmm. So there, the state is working with us quite a bit on this. What do you think the cost would be to put in the monitoring well? I don't know, but we do have some money set aside to start looking at that. And, um, and actually, the, at, at one of your um, future meetings, we'll probably ask Dr. Sproul to come in because um, <coughs> Onwasa, the city, and the base have a water resources group that meets quarterly. And we look at, um, we are looking at working together and locating where water is readily available and sending it to where it's needed. Now we're looking at regional approaches. And um, as part of that, we've been working on three major items. One is what is called a hydrostratigraphic framework analysis. Basically, it's looking at the underground aquifers of Onzo County and identifying um, water quantity, water quality, the aquifers that are available, and, um, and, and basically trying to um, provide predictions of where good areas would be and where certain portions of the aquifer are available. And as an example, as part of that study, um, Dr. Sproul's um, group actually identified that there are three portions of the Castle Hain in this area and pointed out that we are only, between the base on Wassa and the city, we all may not be in the same portion of the Castle Hain, so there, which is good because we may not have as much of an impact on each other. 
um, but there are portions that we're not even using, so that may be an option. Um, another effort that that group is working on is um, a monitoring well study. We've identified, and I don't remember the total, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 monitoring wells around the county um, to be installed. Unfortunately, to do all of them, I want to say the price tag was estimated at somewhere around $2 million or something for, for all of those. And um, we, we went through, identified possible locations. We identified um, who would, the, basically the state would be responsible for those after they're constructed. And we identified um, what, it, where each monitoring well should be located. So for example, not all of them would be in the Black Creek. Some would be in the Black Creek, some would be in the Castle Hain, and where those needed to be located. And the third thing that we're working on as a group is a joint water model where they look at the basis system, the city system, and Omasa system, and where they could be interconnected. And when I say the system, not just the distribution, also the raw water system, and where they could be interconnected, and in the future, how we could move water around. So it may be, it, you'll see that one of the next items is we've got to be looking where we are going with um, our future wells because we need wells for the future and part of that it, it may be that those wells are actually located you know somewhere outside well outside of town and they may go through portions of Omwasa's transmission system to get back to the city so the the regional approach is to actually look where water is available and get it to where it's needed um, so that was a long-winded answer to your question. Thank you. You're welcome. So as Wally just stated, the this next project is the water supply wells. We're looking at the construction of four to five wells. And, um, and it is a result of, like as you just stated, that we have to start identifying where those future wells, water sources are going to be. And then also in, in the event that it's um, we can't delay the reduction as as he just stated so um, we're looking at design in 19 with construction in 21 fiscal year 21 at an estimated cost of about 3.2 million but again this is so far out it, it's just a preliminary number at this point I have a question when will you know if you can meet that for those four criteria it will be probably very close to 2018 but even if we have to take the next reduction with the um, with what we have available in the Black Creek permitted capacity wise and where we're permitted in the Castle Hain, we would be able to meet it based on today's demand and projected growth at that time. However, if we see many years like we saw in, I guess that was in 2008, you know, 2006, 2008 time frame where things were growing <laughs> very rapidly. Mm -hmm. You know, that time, you know, the, the amount of capacity available is obviously a lot smaller than if, if growth is slower. So, but we are, one of the, um, one of the things that we are taking into consideration though is while we have a, f you know, a enough permitted capacity in the Castle Hain, one of the challenges we face is some of those wells when if they're pumped very hard we actually see impacts on other wells of ours so the what that tells us is those wells are too close together to be run at their full capacity all the time so the the idea is you know we want we do not want to overstress the aquifer and the further that we can spread our wells and the more wells that we have available, actually the, the healthier the aquifer will be. So you're looking at building new ones and shutting some down so they're not concentrated in such an area? Well, what we would do is instead of shutting them down, we would just alternate them. We have oh, them okay. on pumping schedules. And right now we have essentially a matrix that tells us which wells work well together mm -hmm. for pressure, for um, drawdown, those, you know, um, what and the amount of capacity that we need. 
I'm a little confused by the sheet here. It says um, the total cost is three million eight hundred seventy-five thousand. With the, the when you go down, it shows that the future there will be a three million two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, it was. Uh, that's a typo. The total cost is three point eight. And well, if you add that and the total that's paid in the years before, two twenty and before, that it totals up. But it says it's coming Six, out of the eight. waterfront. <clears throat> So my confusion becomes, if the water fund is paying this, why is there uh, a budget impact that shows uh, bond at 5%? And I would assume that 5% is why that $3 million goes up to $4,751,000. Is has not been updated. Is that going to be paid by the water yeah, fund, or is it going to be done with a bond? I, th I think the in it has been updated. I think the intent at this point is that it to be financed with a bond. So we would need to change this instead of yes. what? I mean, the water fund would be what pays the bond back, yeah. but Understand. your point is that revenue bond yes. would be the more appropriate funding source. Well, and in that case, it explains why 3.25 becomes 4. four. And that leads me to another question about the whole package here. It looks like everything is coming out of the fund except for this uh, bond, another bond, which is uh, 900 and some odd thousand dollars, and a grant. And I'm wondering two things. One is, do we have the grants identified that we would go for, and will they be around when we need them? And the other is, will enough of our current revenue bonds be retired that this won't put pressure on the enterprise fund? In other words, you're trading out old bonds for new ones because you're retiring the old ones. We will be retiring some in 2018, um, and so the short answer is yes, those are things that we'll have to consider. I don't know for sure what else we'll retire after 2018. Okay, and I, my obvious question is risen because if we're adding bonds to bonds, that puts pressure mm -hmm. on the financial health of the enterprise mm -hmm. fund, which can only go one this place. Where you talked about it, about uh -huh. the special assessments. Yes. Okay. So one point of clarification, the one you asked about, about the grants, mm -hmm. instead of saying grant, that should, and it may not be an option yet it, yeah. because it's a drop down menu, but that's where we talked <coughs> about private funding, like a special area assessment. Oh, okay. So okay. that would be funded by private dollars, you know, would be reimbursed by private dollars. Okay. understand it's not that you're gonna have to go out and seek a federal grant of some right. sort that's yeah. correct we we need to update that and probably have it added in it's not something that we can add in but we can get the software people added in. that's yeah. actually a drop down menu I, I, what, as long as it's not something Valid that's point. like we're betting on mm -hmm. it and we don't know if it'll be there because the federal government cancels grants all the time <laughs> that's correct uh, well we'll make those changes so as you can see, we're staff still working on finalizing the CIP. We are in, in the process of gathering it back together and giving it back to management to sit down with staff again to do some further reviews and to fine tune it. Our hope and our intention is to bring back before this committee in February the pr actual proposed CIP by that point. Um, our hope that we could delivered it uh, or had um, vetted it with staff and then um, and with the final CIP to be adopted by council in the city's budget in June. So we've, in the past, we've kind of given you a whole bunch of information at one meeting, and now we're just kind of spreading it out so we have time to discuss it in more detail. I'd like to make a motion that uh, the board shows its support for this without reservation, that this improvement plan that was presented tonight, I don't think, I don't have any questions that would rise to say that we shouldn't go give our support for them to pursue each of those projects as they were presented to us. So I make a motion that the board have a vote of support for this presentation. Do we have a second to that motion? Or any discussion on it? Yeah. All right. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Carmen? No. You're not? No. Okay. We have all, except Mr. Aragano, <laughs> who's decided it's no, uh, There's no time for discussion, but it's... Go ahead. Yeah, there is. Go ahead. Too far out. We, 50 things are going to change if the base comes in or this comes in or that comes in. I mean, they're going to do it. 
Or if they're going to go through it, I just don't see really any need to worry about it right now. I'm not worried. I just well, you know what I mean. I'm yeah, worried. Uh, but I think there was a time when these things went by us, mm -hmm. and by the time they were presented to us, it was way too late to have us right. make any comment. And I didn't see anything in this. I, in fact, I was pleasantly pleased that some of the things they were presenting yeah. to us had the ability for us to question and get good answers on. Right. So I would like to encourage that by giving support to the okay. staff. To, so when they talk to council, they can say, hey, the water sewer board did more than just stare at a pretty face like Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> that and what we made the motion on was that, was the presentation uh, and what was presented to us, not that everything on here is going to end up being exactly as is. No. But we recognize that it's all going to change and go sideways in more <laughs> ways than one. <laughs> it happens. Well, and one of the things I was pleased to see, it didn't look like they were looking at so much that if it all got approved, it would affect the enterprise fund in a negative manner. This seems more than reasonable as far as if it had the opportunity, we'd go down this way. Uh -huh. So, again, I just would like to give them some support and let them know I wasn't, we were kind of paying attention. <laughs> One question. Yes, sir. Next meeting, is there any way possible to get an idea of how much money's in our water and sewer fund? And that, or is that top secret and we're not supposed to know? No, no it's not top secret. Are you, are you looking at a fund balance? What do you, I mean, that's well, a pretty broad. <laughs> there is there are several several items on here that put down 2018 like that. That's not all that much under hundred thousand. If the money's there, why can't these items be done sooner? Some of them possibly could be done sooner, but we also we don't only look at money. We also look at capability of the staff. I mean, we don't have a large staff with. You know, planning and a design. ton of a ton of engineers um, a lot of these take time and um, as mr. Aragona pointed out some of them you know we need more time we need more information before we can actually say we can carry this project forward so we are trying to be realistic about how much we can actually carry forward as well as how much we can afford plus well, you're still working like on projects this, now this, that's correct the that's the important bit. Seventy-eight thousand dollars, and you're going to try and do it in 2016. That's another whole year away. That's correct. If that money is in the bank, why not start whatever you need to do to get it got done? If something's got to be done, why wait another year and a half, two years to even start on it? I would only mention that we looked at the bigger CIP project, and there's a number of projects that's ongoing. So maybe to start something, you'd have to pull people off current projects. Well, that's, that may be true, yeah. But it, you it already to have to start cleaning dumpsters in six months, right? That's correct. The And the, so you're going to be paying extra to take that to the landfill because of the water content? Well, no, the, the dumpsters, we're going to have to figure out how we clean anyway. We are already paying to haul the grease that they take out of the lift stations wetter than what we would normally right. take it. So it's already costing you money because you it can't is. get it dried out as much as you'd like. That's correct. But we also need time to plan and figure out, as you pointed out, where, where are we going to locate it? it? How are we going to handle grease? Are there opportunities for handling other things also? So it does take time. So Hell. that's why, just because it's identified in 16, doesn't mean that we won't be able to devote, a, you know, some planning time to that project. Is there a difference between how you handle the wet versus the dry? I mean, well, where does cost. it go? Is it just the cost to go to the same spot? Land it all goes to landfill, okay. correct? Yeah, it's just yeah. You, you pay more if it's wet. Right. And and they, and they don't cut us a break. <laughs> so. and, and that's the case of at the moment because one thing that's done with the septage, grease trap septage, is it can be dewatered and it can be composted and there's other things that can be done with it and then it does not have to go to the landfill which is why bringing up the option of the grease traps because there are a significant number of those in the city they all have to be pumped and if we don't have anybody here that's really able to handle it and it's having to go elsewhere to be handled um, the options that the restaurants have are, are more limited 
Well, my only reason for saying that, if that's the case, then there's just more justification of why we need to build this to reduce the cost you're paying now. That's correct. Okay. Makes more sense. The Raleigh sewer plant's still composting their sludge. Do you know? The which one? They still are. To my knowledge, they are. The Raleigh, did you say? Yeah, Raleigh Point are. I don't know. You've seen that point? Yeah. Nice. Well, it sounds like you and Peter are going to have to work Saturdays and Sundays to get this stuff going a little bit. Don't forget Deanna. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Young, do you have anything else you yes, want to? Sir. All right. Old business. Any old business? Oh, we got old business. <coughs> person? On the December 11th meeting, you had said Oof. that you would let the committee know the city manager would have something available summarizing the meeting we had all had with the council. And oh, yeah. Mr. Thomas said that he got his summary by email recently. Do you have something for us? I got one yesterday, so I will be happy to send it out. Okay. I think it went out there yesterday. yesterday. Okay. Yes. So we, we will get that out to you. Okay. Yes, sir. That's it for me. And that's it for you. Anybody yes, else have any old business? We have any new business? Well, I've got one report. I did not attend Anwas's meeting last month due to the conflict with the city council meeting that we had. It was the same night. So I won't know anything until next. It's coming Tuesday. We have another meeting for January, so I'll be that. Uh, you should have gotten in your packet a couple on the planning board. No, you no. That in your, oh, you didn't? No. I'm the only one who got it. Okay. <laughs> the planning board, this is December. They did not receive any, well, from the 10th to the 16th, did not receive any development plans for that period. Did not approve or request council approval for any development plans. They did 70 building permits. That's, you know, adding on to homes and such as that building a garage and all. And they did not receive any building permit applications. December 17th through the end of December. Uh, let's see. They're going to change down east heating. They're on 17. They're proposing to rezone from RSF7 to corridor commercial. That used to be, a, I think, a gas station or something there at one time, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know where down east is on 17. The oil. This where the oil comes from. Oh, no, There's no, a no, car no. lot there now. Used no, to be that's something the car lot's still there. That's, I'm thinking yeah, but I mean, what was the in there? Lot, right? Well, that's. Well, it's a portion of their property that's going to be American, American oil? Was it American? I think it was American, yeah. Base was right. so well, at Hampton Inway, Burlington Coat Factory is going to get about a 55,000 square foot building there. <clears throat> They're going to be a 68,500 <laughs> square foot. Burlington's going to 55,000 that, and then there's going to be a 7,500 and a 6,000 square foot, two additional stores. Uh, they issued 82 permits during this reporting period. And there was no other noticeable building permit applications and or inquiries during this time. There's the planning board is, or the planning administrator and them are a hungry Howie's Anybody know what that is? I pizza. Don't. Pizza. 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 Okay, pizza. okay well, they're Another reviewing place. a Hungry Howard's, <laughs> Howie's Pizza Place, I guess. No idea where it's at. They it's right beside the new Lowe's grocery store. Yeah. It's not down on here, so I don't know. I haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah. That's how I knew what it was. Jill, they, have the way <laughs> they have the paper up in the window that says, it says like flavor pizza. Well, that's all for the Okay. Any other business of any kind for anybody? Nope. Making the motion to adjourn. Anybody? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, second it. <laughs> second. Thank you very much. All right. All in favor? Right. Motion carried. <laughs>